What's up, boxing fans? It's your boy Rick Muhammad, Brawler Sports Media in the building. It's a sad day in boxing. We lost a good one, uh, a father, a coach, uh, helping inner city kids walk in his gym and, you know, turn them into world champions or just give them the confidence and, and help them build and grow in life itself, if you will. So we send our deepest condolences out to uh, a gentleman and a scholar, Mr. Gary Russell Sr., father of Gary Russell Jr., former WBC featherweight champion of the world, father of Gary Russell Antonio uh, Russell uh, and, and, and Gary Antoine Russell, and there's a couple other brothers uh, as well. Uh, they always, you know, treat brawler sports media uh, with nothing but kindness. Anytime I wanted to interview, uh, Senior would always be uh, welcoming me with open arms, as does the sons. So, you know, I, I wanted to send out my condolences to these kings uh, on losing uh, their pops. Uh, he truly will be missed. Uh, great coach, great father, great friend, great husband, if you will. Uh, for those of uh, us who've met him, know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, and if you haven't ever met him, just hearing all the stories about him, you would embrace him in his spirit right now. So we wish uh, uh, nothing but good prayers sending out to the uh, Russell family. And, uh, you know, hey, God bless you guys. If you need anything, hey, Brawler Sports Media, we right here for you. Respect. Rest in peace, Gary Russell Sr. We love you, man. Let's go, champ. And now Brawler Sports Media presents a throwback interview Gary Russell Sr. Boy, Rick Mohammed, Brawler Sports Media. I'm live here at Gary Russell's training camp with the patriarch of the family, Gary Russell Sr. How you doing, sir? I'm wonderful, man. I'm alive on the battlefield. Man, first of all, I done done a lot, a lot of reading up on you. Do I'm from the South Side of Chicago, so I'm hearing your stories about how how you had the the, the boys. Y'all had this two bedroom apartment in the lobby. Was you made that a boxing uh, workout area, or if they was in the alley, that's what we used to do. You put them in the alley and go. And uh, Gary was telling me how you go to the the slums of the neighborhoods in in Southeast D.C. and in the D.C. area and say, hey, uh, where your where your baddest kids at? Y'all make a little money. Let's put them in here and let my guys get some work. Yeah, <laughs> we talked about that yesterday, man. How we used to ride in the worst neighborhoods, the worst hoods, and. Line them up, man. Line them up. They, <laughs> Line them up. Them they knock them down. <laughs> so, and I and I and I also read about uh, the the first lady, Miss Lawan, and she said that if you ask Senior, he'll tell you he wanted he won't admit that he taught himself how to box. You was basically self taught because I understand uh, you was a real huge fan of Uncle Bobby. Uncle Bobby put you under your wing. You sit on the couch, watch Wide World of Sports. You know we watched Howard Davis, Ray Leonard, and all them cats coming on Wide World of Sports. And and you, Uncle Bobby, showed you how to throw the jab and hit the speed bag, jump the rope, and the basic fundamentals, which is what really wins fights. Exactly. Especially the jab is the best punch in boxing. It is. It is. Start. It starts with punching boxing. A lot of fighters they don't really utilize the jab the way they should. Um, growing up watching my uncle and, like you said, Wild World of Sports, mm -hmm. you know, I'm pretty much basically self-taught. But I understand the mechanics and the jab is the number one tool. Absolutely. So what, what, what possessed you to build this family of a fighting machine? You got all these boys and they all successful fighters. They done won. They got – Various accolades throughout their whole amateur careers. They're all pros. They're very slick and crafty and witty in the ring. Like I was telling Junior, look, Gary, I was like, man, you uh, you got that ring savvy, that general shit when you're in there. And he's just in control. What what made you want to develop this army of, of, of sons into boxers? You know, it actually wasn't a plan. Um, I have an older son, Gary Jones, outside of marriage. 22 and 2. 22 and 2. Yep. And when he came to live with us, I believe it was around 13 or 14, um, he was, like, really in the streets, going left. Mm -hmm. I said I had to find something to structure him. 
so I sent him to a gym, and I left him. Came back to pick him up, and the coach said, kid can't fight. You're going to have to pay me to train him. So I thought it was an embarrassment. You know, it was disrespectful. Mm -hmm. I told the coach, man, look, I trained him myself. By training him, Lil Gary was under him, so he would stay with us. And he started picking up the concept of boxing mm -hmm. at a young yeah, age. No. Right. So, you know, it kind of followed. You know, the brothers kind of fell in the footstep because I was in the gym so much. Yeah. And I had them with me. Uh -huh. So the rest of them just fell in line. So it truly wasn't a thing that I planned it. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think the creator just placed it there. Yeah. I really like how you've been a mentor for the shorties and way back in uh what's your other address in maryland where you with the red brick uh house and the green uh turf going up to the steps how you had the basement no bags no uh he no heavy bags no speed bags no nothing it was just a rubber uh, towel on the floor and a mirror hanging and you would just leave that door unlocked for the shorties in the neighborhood to come and get something some relieve themselves from something yeah, man, you know, it's all about giving back. Um, a lot of the kids don't really have mentors, people in their life. This their form. I had, when you say an open door policy, this is my house. It was The door was open. Yes. <laughs> you know, so you try to save one. You know, each one teach one. You save one, I hope that they will pass it on. Mm -hmm. Got to gotta, gotta touch on a, a, a sad story now. You had an older son named Devon. And uh, from what I read, man, he he was a hell of a fighter. This cat could fight, and how you took him to Kansas City for the National Golden Gloves. They they say the guy, you say the, your son only trained like five days for the fight. He wasn't nowhere near in shape for this fight, and won that championship hands down, and made it look easy doing so. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, Devon, he was a good kid. Actually, a lot of times, if you look at Antoine you see the remnants of Devon. You know, actually we're going to court uh, next month. After about 14 years, I received a call that they made an arrest in his murder. Um, oh, wow. That's, yeah. that's good news, man. Good news, right. So, you know, we're trying to just go through that period of... Uh, Live that all over yeah, again. Yeah, but actually, you know, like re putting a scab off a wound. But it, it gives you closure, too. And, and 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 that was that was touching. That, that brought tears to my eyes because it's hard losing somebody, uh, a loved one, a sibling. Doesn't matter, man. And 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 from what I understand, you saw that he was uh, going down the wrong path, and the streets was getting the best of him. And so you called out to your buddy Milton Lacroix, who at the time was Shannon Briggs, trainer in Florida, in Miami, and. Milton said, okay, send him to me. I'm going to charter a plane for him, and I'm going to send this ticket. All I ask for is he dress in a suit and a tie so he can understand the concept that this is what you're going to be doing here. We're not going to put up with any foolishness. So you're going to start on the plane dressed business. And that was in 2004, March, I believe, and they found your son murdered uh, in D.C. behind some construction company, Phelps. Yeah, vocation, yeah, and then and 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 when you buried him, you guys had the uh, the plane ticket. You put it on his inside jacket pocket, and uh, there was a jet. When you closed the casket, a picture of a jet, and he still made that trip. Yeah, he did. He did. Um, like you said, waiting for closure, and we haven't. I haven't personally went to visit him because I'm waiting for closure. You know, so hopefully it'll be here soon. Um, I really want to get all the details. There are things that I believe or people that I feel as though were involved, you know, that just come up with, now they have an eyewitness. 14 years later, you got an eyewitness, you know. Did you have one on the day of the murder? The same witness. Wow. This is uh, Gary Russell Sr., patriarch of the, of the Russell family. Uh, built a dynasty. You guys should have your own reality show. You should do a TV series like Empire, the Boxing Empire, or the Russell Empire. Hey, Hollywood, put that together. Uh, they could bring that way, Coach. And uh, what a hell of a job he's done with his own kids and 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 other shorties outside of the family as well. A mentor. Uh, you know, he's, he's trying to, like he said, you bring you bring five in. If you save one, 
You've done your job. So with that being said, uh, champ, I appreciate you guys letting me come in here. This is big. I'm in, I'm in the training camp of Gary Russell Jr., the WBC featherweight champ of the world who's getting ready to fight uh, Joseph Diaz Jr., May 19th, National Harbor, MGM. Tickets are still on sale. You want to see a good show? Come see these Russell brothers get down and do their thing. Pops trained them. He going to be there. They still in the gym right now doing their second training of the day. Like Gary. Look, Gary said they do three a days at times. This is the sport. This is what you do. You sacrifice and you give up a whole lot in this sport so that you can be great and have those successes and accolades. Anything you want to share with the shorties out there who are on this path that's looking to make it big in the sport of boxing, uh, coach, what would, you, what would you tell them? What would your advice be? Perseverance. You have to just continue to grind. Continue to grind, man. Don't look back. You look at all the successful fighters or pugilists now. These are the ones that stay fast, kept in that lane. You know, uh, you think about De La Hoya, all the greats. You think back to the amateur days. They can go back when they started as juniors, when they were eight, nine years old, mm -hmm. and they kept on the course. Yes. So, you know, if you keep diligent, keep focused, press, press keep forward. pressing forward, stay on the battlefield, then, you know, eventually you'll come out victorious. Last but not least, before I let you go and get to your job, what would your message be to our young black youth? young black men and women and just our people in general the black people in general with racism the way it is now uh teen young black males are being murdered every time you look at the news by the hands of a cop and they were unarmed what would your message be to your people right now today how do we overcome and come together and unify as a race wow that's deep um knowledge i think they first have to understand who they are as a people, where they come from. Understand their, you know, uh, with their ancestries. Strength really is what's inside of them. Understand the most melanated people, you know, they bind to this society, the set up European society. You gotta get back to your roots. You know, it was amazing to see they did the movie Black Panther and you've seen a lot of people, all, it almost seems like it kind of united people to understand their heritage. We and felt good. We felt, we felt like good. Exactly. <clears throat> and this, the dimension and the presence, the, the, the movie itself, it grossed so much money. But there was a message. There was a lot of subliminal messages in that particular movie. I'm just hoping it wasn't a fad. You know, some people go through things and then they burn out. I think the last fight... Uh, Big Baby, he Big came out. Big Baby came out in the whole Black Panther theme. Mm -hmm. um, Danny Jacobs, he was re really Afrocentric. Yes. You know, even his, his the family. opening. His family was dressed that way as well. Oh man, they were they were doing it. Yeah. You know, that was, that was awesome. and then you look around. You know, you see a lot of other melanated fighters who are now becoming semi-conscious. So when that third eye opens, mm -hmm. and they understand the power of the pioneer gland. They understand the power of lining up with the universe and understand their blackness. You know, I would hope that it would grow. You know, if you notice, you see uh, a lot of celebrities now, they're sporting unks, life crosses, and, you know, they, they, they're showing conscious pictures. I'm just hoping, you know, that they start living it, start researching it, understand what, what kind of lineage they really come from. We come from a great people. We come from a strong people. We come from the people who originated everything. It's not DNA. It might be suppressed, and you can go to ancestral DNA, and you can go, you can go back to the very beginning of your roots. They don't want you to know it. But realistically, if you understand, it's in your DNA. Greatness is there. You come from kings, queens, astrologers. You know, I knew this was going to be fun with him. This guy, he's deep. Hey, I'm uh, Rick Muhammad, Brawler Sports Media. I'm in Gary Russell's training camp. I'm with my man, Gary Russell Sr. I appreciate you, man, for having me come through and do this with you and your family. Uh, hell of a guy. We looking for some hell of a fights coming up May 19th. I know you got these cats ready. They're going to be in there, like you said, grinding and persevering. And uh, I'm gonna, I am plan on being there to help support you guys as well. Thank you so much. God bless you. Good luck to you. 
This is the Russell family, baby. My man. Brawlers, baby. Brawlers, baby.